Hello everybody, it's Leslie and the Activations All-Stars. In this video, we are gonna get right into some work in the 90-90 position, which is a contrived position, but it has lots to offer us for hip rotations. Um, so we're gonna show slightly different variations, but let's get the angles all figured out first. Bring your left leg in front. So to set up in 90-90, we wanna be particular and we're gonna use the mat as a landmark. So make your left shin parallel to the short edge of your mat, your left thigh parallel to the long edge of your mat, and then separate thigh from thigh by a right angle, 90 degrees. And you might end up actually lining up your right shin with the long edge of your mat. And then just keep little 90 degree bends or right angles in both ankles. Now, if you're feeling really tipped over, what you might do in addition to resting into your hand, like Emma was just showing, is elevate the left side of your bum. And that can give your right hip a little bit more leeway to land. Additionally, there may be times when you wanna work down on your forearm away from the action. That can open up a little bit of space. So uh, the final option, if you're feeling pretty comfortable uh, with your front leg being externally rotated and your back leg being internally rotated is actually exaggerate the internal rotation by propping up your front ankle. If your knee ends up floating when you prop up your ankle, maybe it's not time for that yet. So if you can get your knee to touch down more or less, uh, but just elevate your ankle a little bit, that's one way to go further into external rotation. Um, so from here on out, take what you need, everybody. I'm just gonna keep my little cushion because it feels good. Uh, and knowing that you can bring your hands down anytime, let's just get a little bit of a rock on. So think of your rear leg sit bone driving down to the ground and lifting up from the ground. And just have a little rock in your pelvis. I'm gonna show one more option. When you're working with the front leg, but your back leg is giving you all sorts of funny feelings, you might just tuck that knee in a little, a bit of a deeper bend, or you can even tuck that front, that back leg forward. Now we've left 90-90 if you do that, uh, but if you're only working front leg action, that would be fine. Okay, start to bias that forward tilt and start to pull your belly forward over your front thigh. Scan with your front body, left and right, trying to find the kind of most exciting angle for a stretch. And you might also be gently leaning forward, but there's no need to bow down. Your pelvis is setting you up for the position. So keep lifting your sit bones up and back behind you as you draw your belly button forward over your thigh to find that stretch. And then hands or no hands, you get to decide. Start to press your outer left leg into the floor in front of you. Pressing as much as you can with your outer knee, your outer shin, and your outer foot, a big global squish down. And then without letting your left knee lift and come off the ground, add a little extra push with your outer foot and outer ankle. So it's as if your outer foot, outer ankle wants to swoop through the floor. If the floor wasn't there, it would be like your foot would come directly underneath your knee. So keeping that intensity of your ankle swooshing down through the floor, let's add about five breaths, nice and slow, to intensify the action. So dial up that urge to swoop your ankle through the floor with every inhale. Keep it as you exhale. At the end of those roughly five breaths, we're gonna switch the action and attempt to kick your ankle off the floor as if you could tickle your own right ear. It's probably not going to move, but that's the direction that we're gonna be aiming for. So let's lean into this feeling of chopping down, swooshing down for another couple of breaths. 
Maybe you've rallied enough intensity that you're getting some of those full body shakes. And then in three, two, one, think of kicking your ankle to your right ear. Ooh! Don't let your left knee lift at all. It's gonna stay down, but think of lifting and rotating further into external rotation. Drive your ankle to your ear. Let's hold that urge for another three, two, one, and rest. From all of that leaning, pulling forward, back up a little ways. Again, you might be on your hand, on your forearm, or going hands-free. Stay oriented towards your front leg. And we're just gonna do five lifts, drawing your entire leg straight up off of the floor. You're gonna put a little bit more juice into the ankle side of that lift. So try to get your whole front leg to lift, and then land with gentleness. Three more. Rising up, softening down, and you've got the freedom to back up far enough that this becomes within the realm of possibility. Um, a, the bigger the lift, not more important, just getting some lift. And then next time that your leg lands, call that good. Try a little bit of rocking back and forth again. And then if you've tucked your back leg in uh, to make things a little bit softer, re-establish your 90-90. And know that you've got those options of leaning away hand or forearm. Turn your awareness towards your back leg. And with a little bit of that urge to dip your back sit bone down, try lifting your entire leg off the ground ooh, and setting it back down. Let's do about five. I'm noticing in myself and in my all-stars here that there might be an urge for your left knee to levitate off the ground when you're trying to lift your right leg. So keep that outer left knee pinned to the ground. And if it's not on the ground, you might tuck a blanket or a ball in there and try to keep some pressure on that blanket or ball. <laughs> Are the muscles firing? Are they like trying? The brain to body message is a little a rocky road. Okay, that was more than five. When your leg comes down again, once more, drive this right sit bone to the floor. Keep your inner foot, inner heel down on that right leg, but start to lift your right knee up, separating it far away from your left knee, and then bring it back down. Let's do that five times. So again, maybe aiming for hands free as a goal to work towards, or as a way of doing this at a training intensity, as upright through your spine as you can, knowing what your options are. Then next time that you lift your right knee, we're gonna pause here. Keep your left knee pinning down towards the floor. Make as great of a space as you can from knee to knee. Your hands can come behind you here as needed, but try sitting your right sit bone down, landing in a roughly symmetrical position called bear sit. Dig with your heels, drive your knees apart, shoot your spine up tall, tall, tall. Let's hold for a breath. And then keeping your knees wide, 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 start to lift your right sit bone. We're gonna go back where we came from. Keep your back knee from coming down. Let that front knee land, and then finally return to 90-90. Ah, do what you'd like to do between sides. Maybe a little wobbly leg drum, or flip-flop in and out. And then come to set yourself up now with your right shin in front. Things may be pretty different on this side, so remember that you might be propping up your right bum or even your right ankle uh, or just going on the bare floor. And once you've got all of your angles, 90 degrees, that square angle, that right angle at ankles, knees, and from thigh to thigh, just rock a little bit. Rock back and forth. Now lifting and lowering your left sit bone, driving it to the floor and then letting it levitate. Maybe there comes a little rounding to your low back and then a nice inward curve. 
just spending some time kind of greasing the gears. And then as you lean forward again, as your left sit bone starts to lift, pull your sit bones up and back behind you. Pull your belly button forwards. Gently press with your front leg and scan left to right. As you're scanning, start to collect information about where, what angle invites the kind of broadest or most amount of stretch for the back of your hip, back of your tissue on the outside of this joint, the hip joint, and then choose a spot to stay. Start to intensify those actions that we touched on on the first side, pressing down globally with the whole outer edge of this right limb, outer foot, outer ankle, outer shin, outer knee, even outer thigh, while still pulling your belly button forward, while inviting your sit bones to reach back behind you. Then give a little bit more priority without lifting your right knee at all. Give more priority to chopping through the floor with your outer right ankle, outer right foot. Once again, I'm going to show if the floor wasn't there, it's like you're trying to kick your foot directly under your knee, coming from external rotation out of it. So let's stay for another at least five breaths gathering intensity into that chopping urge. And you'll see not a lot of action on the outside, but maybe every now and then you get a little scrunchy face on somebody's facial expression. It can be intense on the inside. So keep building your urge to chop your outer right foot into the ground without giving up your belly pulling forward, without giving up your sit bones pulling back. And just like before, we're gonna swap this action suddenly and intensely to lift the ankle. So just remember what that was like. And we're gonna to start to do it. I'll count us down. Give yourself another couple of breaths of maximum chop into the floor. Don't let your outer right knee lift. We're gonna switch in three, two, one. Think of lifting your inner right ankle up towards your left ear. Don't let that knee lift. I know it wants to, different action. Probably nothing's happening, or maybe, like me, your foot is doing some stuff that's not helpful, but nor is it hurting, so okay, fine. Keep driving your ankle towards your left ear. Lift, lift, lift. Push with your hands if you need to. We're gonna go for another three, two, one. Whoo, let that rest. Back away from that strong curl forward so that you have some wiggle room. We're gonna go for our five global lifts. Maybe hands are down, maybe hands are just holding onto thin air for heaven's sake. And let's try five times, lifting straight up and soft landing. Aim to lift your ankle as much as you lift your knee. You can see in all of our bodies here, there's a tendency for the knee to lift more easily than the ankle. So send your efforts to the ankle side of your lower leg, trying to get it to lift as much as your knee. Maybe one or two more times here. Ooh. Last one. Mm. Okay. Reorganize your 90-90 if it got a little sloppy. I know mine did. Press into the ground with your outer right knee, even if there's a space there. Keep that space as small as you can. And then start to drop your left sit bone down. Pivot over your inner left foot and drive your left knee up and back and then down in front again. Just swaying towards our bear sit and then back to 90-90. Remember that we're aiming for a tall spine, but if your legs aren't moving at all, back off, put your hands on the ground, give your torso a little bit of support. And then next time that you lift your left knee, we're gonna pause here. Establish as broad of a reach from knee to knee as you can without letting your right knee escape from its start position next to the floor. Hold that for another breath, big broad expanse from knee to knee. 
Then let your left sit bone land. Come to that symmetrical place between sides. You might have to kind of move your feet around a little bit. Dig with your knees, drive, sorry, dig with your heels, drive your knees apart. Take a few breaths to find as tall of a torso as you can. So you might be using your arms to help create that tall statue, stature, or maybe just your muscles around your middle. And then slowly, keeping that broad expanse, return your right knee towards the top of your mat. Only once your right knee is grounded or as grounded as it gets, then bring your left knee along and land. And then put your legs where you want to put them. Have a little wiggle. You might try uh, some of your favorite hip dominant yoga shapes and see how they feel after all of that good action. Hmm. Nice work, everybody.